I don't want to hold everybody up. So I just want to say hello and welcome to the Tourism NT Trade Training Program. My name is Kieran Smith and I'm the Distribution Coordinator for Tourism NT. Um, today I'm joined by my colleague Gabrielle Deacon. Some of you may already know Gabrielle. Um, she has been at Tourism NT for a while now. So just a reminder before we start, if you can just ensure that your video is off and that you're on mute. So um, there's a lady called Margaret who's just joined us and she has got her video on. Thank you, Margaret. That's great. If you've got any questions um, during the presentations, just send them through the chat box and we'll do a Q&A with our operators at the end of each of their presentations. And we will be recording the session because we'll be putting it on our website um, later in the week. So I'm excited to see that we've got agents from Australia and New Zealand attending today. Welcome to everybody and also welcome to any new recruits to the trade training program. We hope that these webinars will help you get a better understanding of the Northern Territory so you can sell it with confidence. Um, and also, so welcome to everybody. We just want to make sure that you're all doing okay. We know it's been a really rocky 18 months, but um, it does feel like there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So hopefully um, things will be all open by the end of the year. So I just want to share my screen so that I can do my presentation. Gabrielle, can you see that okay? Yep, you're good to go. Great, thank you. So I just want to welcome our three operators that we've got joining us today. We have Annabelle Curtin from um, Catherine Outback Experience. Annabelle and her husband run the an Outback show near Catherine and have reached, recently launched an Outback glamping experience. So welcome Annabelle. We also have Angelina Briscoe from Wendy Wu Tours. They run two tours in the Northern Territory. One of them is in Kakadu and the other is in the Red Centre. And we have Tim Nielsen from Top End Day Tours. They have a variety of day tours that run into Arnhem Land from Darwin and from Kakadu. So welcome everybody and thank you for being here. Um, before we hear from our operators though, I want to just give you a few updates on what's been happening in the Northern Territory. It's been a while since we last spoke. So where are we? So if you're new uh, to the training program, you're not quite sure where the Northern Territory is. Um, it is top and centre of Australia and we refer to it as two areas. We have the top end and that includes Darwin, Kakadu, Arnhem Land, Catherine and the Tiwi Islands and the Red Centre and that includes Uluru, Alice Springs, Kings Canyon and Tennant Creek. So this map gives you quite a good idea of the context of the size of the Northern Territory. It's pretty big. It's about 1600 k's long and it is also about that's about the same length as New Zealand for any of our Kiwi, Kiwi agents on today. So just an update on what's happening with COVID-19. I'm sure this time last year we all thought COVID would be a thing of the past. Unfortunately, it is not. Um, the current restrictions that are in place at the moment with New South Wales, as you can see in the map here, all of New South Wales has been considered a hotspot at the moment, so you cannot enter the Northern Territory unless you're a returning resident. But um, apart from that, you cannot enter the Northern Territory. At the moment, if you've got any clients transiting through Sydney Airport, they actually have to get a COVID test when they arrive into the Northern Territory and wait for a negative test result before they can leave. Uh, anyone coming from ACT it has also been declared as a hotspot um, and with Victoria it has been a bit of a moving beast but at the moment um, Melbourne, Shepparton, Ballarat. The, sorry we've just got somebody that doesn't have the <laughs> the mute on if they could please mute themselves it would be great. So at the moment with Victoria we've got Melbourne, Shepparton, Ballarat, um, the Surf Coast Shire, Geelong, Wangaratta, the Murrindindee and Mitchell Shires are all declared hotspots. Anyone else travelling uh, from Victoria or from interstate can transit through the Melbourne or the Victorian airports um, without having to do the COVID test when they arrive into the Northern Territory. Um, and also New Zealand, the trans Tasman um, bubble has been paused until the 30th of November. There's no hotspots at the moment with Western Australia, Queensland, South Australia or Tasmania, but all travellers into the Northern Territory must complete a border entry form before arrival and they can find this online at coronavirus.nt.gov.au um, and they will be asked to show this when they do arrive into the NT. 
So the Northern Territory season, so as you know, we've got the two main regions that I've just mentioned, and they both have two quite different seasons. So in the top end, we're currently in the dry season and the Red Centre is in spring. So these are actually considered to be the best times to visit. So at the moment, the top end, it's really, it's quite hot. It's around about 35 degrees and sunny every day. You'll probably see it on the news. Makes us all very jealous. And in the Red Centre, the temperatures are up to about 31 degrees during the day, but the evenings are cool. Um, so we, um, visitors need to remember to take some warm clothes with them. So we are coming into the tropical summer in the top end and summer season in the Red Centre. In the tropical summer, it's quite hot and humid. It's very similar to Asia. And in the Red Centres, the summers are quite hot, up to about 35 degrees. It's quite a hot, dry heat. Um, and that is why we do our new campaign that we've got um, launching very soon. So you might have seen something um, in the trade media over the last day about the NT summer sale and it is back. So this is for our Australian based operator uh, agents only. So I'm just going to touch on it very quickly. I'm going to be running a couple of webinars over the next few weeks, um, which will go into more detail about the summer sale. So please look out for the EDM that will be coming out later in this week, which will tell you how you can register to attend that. And I do recommend that you attend one of these webinars because the campaign is quite different this year. So NT Summer Sale, it's our summer incentive. Uh, we first run it last year and it was a huge boost to our tourism industry um, over the season, which the seasons which are traditionally a low season for the Northern Territory. It's launching on the 1st of October and will run for six months until the 31st of March. So for every dollar, every thousand dollars spent on NT products through our campaign partners, customers can save two hundred dollars, and that savings capped at a thousand dollars. So if they spend five thousand dollars, they can save a thousand dollars. So products must be booked through our campaign partners, and this year they are Hello World and Viva Holidays, and Holidays of Australia, and NT Now. If you don't work for them, then that's okay. And our webinars next week, we'll go through, we'll have them on um, actually joining our webinars and they're going to discuss how you can get involved in the campaign. So the big change for this year has been that um, anyone over 18 who wants to get the rebate needs to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, so what's in it for you as an agent? This year for every eligible booking that you make, you'll go into the draw to win one of our 15 prize packages. So they're valued at $5,000 each and that includes $1,000 that go towards flights and $4,000 to spend on NT products. So that's just a really quick overview of what um, is involved, but um, please join our webinars. There's one next week and the week after, we will go into some more detail. So another campaign we have in market at the moment is our drive campaign, and this is um, just reminding uh, um, Australians about what great driving holidays we have in the NT. I've discussed some of the drive itineraries in previous webinars, and we have the module on the driving routes. Um, and we also have a really great NT drive guide, which can be found on our consumer site, which is a, um, a good overview. So some updates to what's, of what's happening in the Northern Territory at the moment. Um, in regards to flights, so there's a lot of temporary changes to the flight schedules into the NT at the moment. I'm sure this is the case right around Australia. So flights into the Uluru are only available from Brisbane, all the others have been suspended. And flights from Sydney and Melbourne to Darwin are still operating, but the frequency is quite low. And that's as per, as per the regulations that I mentioned earlier about COVID-19. But in some really positive news, Virgin have launched a new direct flight between Adelaide and Darwin. There's four a week and they are departing on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday and a Sunday. The flight's just under four hours and it's direct, so that's going to be a great connection for us. We have a new module on our trade website and this continues on the uniquely NT theme that we had last time. Um, this quarter we're focusing on glamping in the outback, Asian influences, Aboriginal experiences and World War II history. So just a reminder that you need to complete this to go into um, our draw to one of, one of those $5,000 packages. Uh, a couple of product updates that we have. Uh, Crocosaurus Cove in Darwin have got a new Whipray encounter. It uh, lasts for about 30 minutes. 
up to four guests can join the afternoon fish feeding show where they get to hand feed the two metre whip rays. Um, it's a guided experience and everyone has to be over 10 to do this. It's $51 per adult and $31 for a child. Outback, uh, sorry, Way Outback Safaris, who you might be, who you might know, have got two new tours running over summer, which is going to be great for the NT summer sale. So they have a five-day Red Centre four-wheel drive safari, and that includes Alice Springs, the West McDonnell Ranges, Kings Canyon, Katajuda, and Uluru. They also have a five-day top-end four-wheel drive safari, and that includes Darwin, Litchfield National Park, Catherine, Kakadu National Park, and it finishes in Darwin. So these departures start in November. Uh, we have a new operator called Autopia Tours, who you who are part of the Get Lost Travel Group, who you might be familiar with. They've launched a couple of new tours in the NT over the last few months. So one of them is a full day tour to Kakadu, and that departs from Darwin. They also have a full day tour to Litchfield National Park, which also departs from Darwin. And they have a half day jumping croc tour um, departing from Darwin, which will be running right through the summer. And this is a really good option too if you've got some clients who want to go and do the jumping croc tours um, who don't want to necessarily want to hire a car they can jump on one of these tours and it will take them out to the Adelaide River. Um, at Ezrock Resort they have a new gallery of uh, called the Gallery of Central Australia where you can view authentic Indigenous artwork, you can learn about its significance and observe the artists at work. It's free um, entry and the artworks are available for purchase. It's located opposite the Desert Gardens Hotel and it's open every day and they do have a free um, a daily guided tour which would be a great option. Um, just an update with Ezrock Resort, they're now back at capacity with the exception of the Outback Pioneer Lodge and Hotel and the Field of Light Dinner. These are still not operating but they will be operating again next year. Um, also open in the Kakadu National Parks is Obia and the Jim Jim Falls. They've been closed um, for the last little while for various reasons but these are now both open. Um, just to touch on a couple of events that we've got coming up. So we have the Kakadu Bird Week that runs from the 25th of September to the 2nd of October. They have a really great calendar of events running, which include bird watching tours. They have a whole heap of workshops, um, which include wood carving, traditional painting and weaving. So if you've got any clients that are bird watching um, fans, this would be a good option for them. There's the Desert Mob um, Art and Culture Festival, which is taking place in Alice Springs. It brings together First Nations artists across their desert country. Um, and that is, this is the 30th year that this has been running. So um, a really interesting festival to attend. Million Dollar Fish is happening again from the 1st of October. This is the seventh season. I've talked about this before. Um, this is when they release tagged fish into the wild for keen fishermen to, to catch. Um, and if you catch a tagged fish, you get to win the prize. So there's going to be eight barramundi tagged with a million dollars and there'll be a hundred tagged with ten thousand dollars so they'll be released into the five main fishing regions which is darwin kakadu arnhem land catherine and the tiwi islands uh, and the last but not least is the darwin international luxa festival that's taking place in november uh, this is the third year that this festival has taken is it taking place and it celebrates the Top End's multicultural community and its love of Luxa. It runs for four weeks and it's a really good option if you've got some clients who are food lovers. So just before I wrap up, um, the trade training program prizes. So we had three winners from our last webinar series. Um, so congratulations to Leslie, Jean and Claudia, who all won a pair of Aaron Williams boots and an Akubra hat. In this quarter, we have got two prize packages up for grabs. So to be into one, you need to have registered for this webinar and also you need to complete our module. Um, the two packages are $5,000 each. There's $1,000 for flights and $4,000 for NT tourism products. Um, and you just need to have done all of that by the 31st of October to be into one. 
Um, so one last thing before I hand you over to our operators is for anyone who's Australian based that's part of the Tourism Australia Aussie Specialist Program, uh, the Northern Territory are going to be the feature region for October. So we'll be running a couple of webinars for that. Um, so hopefully you can join those. They'll be taking place later in October and we'll as always have a great prize up for grabs. So uh, that is it from me. I'm going to hand you over to Annabelle, who is uh, from Catherine Outback Experience. So, Annabelle, and just before you start, Annabelle, can I just ask, we've just got um, a couple of people who have still got their cameras on, if they could possibly turn those off so that we can see Annabelle. Good morning. Uh, so bear with me. I do have a newborn baby here and of course timing's everything and she has decided now is the best time for a feed. So um, meet Lottie from Catherine in the Outback. Um, what I'm going to do is start by sharing my screen and turning off my camera. This has taken out one of my spare hands to it was all planned that I'd be able to put this into full screen mode straight away, but that hand is no longer available. <laughs> Radio, here we go. So um, thank you so much. As, as mentioned, we are from Catherine Outback Experience and uh, I thought I'd give you a bit of an overview of who we are, where we're located, what we do um, and all the amazing experiences we now offer thanks to um, really a lot of them came on in COVID times. So um, we are based in Catherine, as the name would suggest, and uh, you can see where that is in relation to Darwin. Um, we're about three hours south of Darwin, uh, and it's it's um, a pretty amazing re region. We've got the incredible Nitmaluk Gorge and National Park, and we've got amazing Aboriginal culture, and uh, it's also really well known for the outback. So, um, and that's the element we bring to the table, I suppose. So. Um, it's quite normal to be walking down the street and see locals wearing cowboy hats and cowboy boots and uh, it's a really big part of our DNA here in addition to the amazing natural attractions like uh, Mataranka in that top image which is just just 50 minutes down the road in this amazing tropical oasis in the middle of cattle station country. So how do you get to Catherine? It's pretty important that you do have a form of transport here, a mode of transport, because there's so much to see and do. Uh, so the most common way that people do come and visit us is uh, via tour buses, uh, their own cars. The GAN train stops here, which is really, really important to our uh, local operators. Uh, but we do have a local airport uh, and helicopters are proving to be a pretty exciting way to see the top end um, for those that way inclined. So a bit about us. Um, in that picture in the middle is my husband Tom and myself and we are the owners and operators of Catherine Outback Experience. So it all sort of came about back some years ago and uh, ironically it's we sort of found ourselves in a very similar COVID situation back in 2011 where a market crashed and uh, my husband had to think outside the box uh, when he could no longer train horses for the cattle stations. So he started singing, he's a singer songwriter and he started singing in the local caravan park and it was there a couple asked him about coming out and seeing what he actually does when it comes to training the horses and dogs and he thought hmm, there's an opportunity here to showcase our life here in the outback and that's where Catherine Outback Experience was born. So from that day it has grown quite a bit. It started off as an outback show and we have more recently expanded into horse riding experiences, uh, a stockman's workshop and as mentioned glamping experiences as well. So a bit about our outback shows where it all started. It's um it's pretty special. It's a raw and real experience. It um, showcases life on the land. So we actually get to do a real horse starting demonstration using one of the horses we are training at the time. So every show is different by the very nature of working with young animals. Uh, we also have a team of working dogs. They're all different ages, all different temperaments and even different breeds. You can see we've got a lot of border collies there and some yellow border collies and even some kelpies. And um, again, we showcase how we train them to work as a team. And they're all different personalities uh, and we sort of work to their strengths rather than worrying about their, their cheekiness and um, we demonstrate how we how we work to those strengths uh, to get them to get the best out of them I suppose. 
Uh, and with that, there's also a little bit of liberty horse training. So working horses without constraints. You can see that final picture. Um, my husband Tom is actually riding that horse without a bridle or a halter on that horse uh, while playing guitar and singing a song. Uh, so all our shows are entwined with some great country, Australian country music uh, and of course stories of our lives uh, living in the outback and working on cattle stations. Uh, so with our Outback shows, we do operate from April to October. Um, you, you did hear previously about the dry season, so that's quite important for our region. Uh, and come the tropical summer, unfortunately, when working with ho animals, horses and dogs, it just gets a little bit too hot. So we, we do shut up shop over those uh, summer months, but we operate the shows from April to October. It's a two hour Outback show. Um, we are very accessible to low mobility. Uh, we have this amazing indoor arena, so it protects guests from, from those warmer days. Uh, and um, we can seat up to 150 people. Uh, and then, as I mentioned more recently, we did bring on horse riding experiences. When COVID hit, we couldn't run our shows due to the restrictions on guest numbers. And we thought, hmm, what could we do to make this work? And what are our local Territorians asking for as well as our tourists. So we bought on horse riding experiences and they've been really, really popular. So we decided to keep them going. Um, what's pretty amazing about this is that all the horses used in our experiences are actually the horses that we, we do also use in our Outback shows and that we compete with when we uh, do get to get away for a few competitions here and there. So um, with our horse riding coming into 22, we are only operating again April to October. Last year we did try to expand it all summer, but we found it was just a little bit too hot for our guests. Uh, we take riders as young as three years old, which is pretty special. Um, not many horse riding places will do that. Uh, and we, we're really big on keeping it um, quite experiential. So we limit our groups to four to six people. Uh, and we also offer private rides and tailored rides. So we're pretty flexible in our approach, um, usually half hour, one hour or a tailored experience. Uh, and we can also um, offer those rides within our indoor arena, our farm, um, our farm area, as well as local trails. Um, so it's, it's pretty special. We can, we can really work with what our customers want in that sense. Uh, and then not so long ago, we brought on a stockman's workshop, which is, like a variation of the Outback show, but more hands-on. So it was really tailored to the tour groups and particularly those smaller tour groups that might have um, sometimes less than 20 guests coming through. Uh, and, and we thought, you know, the, the show is such a big production. We need to do something um, for those smaller groups. And that's where this idea came from. So um, it follows the same format as the Outback show with the horse starting demonstration and the dog training, but we actually get guests in the arena with us to train the working dogs, which is pretty special. They absolutely love it, getting, um, getting allocated their own working dog and sometimes their own puppy to train for the, for the afternoon or morning. Um, a big part of this one also includes um, turning their hand to the horse liberty, which is pretty special. You don't necessarily get to do that elsewhere in the when you're traveling or um, doing your day to day things. So it's a pretty amazing experience. Um, and then, as mentioned, we have recently bought on a glamping experience. So it all sort of ties together for that um, amazing Outback um, experience. And we thought, how can we take this one step further? And that's where the accommodation came from. So we have these beautiful five meter bell tents, king size beds. Um, you can see there's tables and chairs in there as well. Uh, and we launched that in July this year and have had the most amazing feedback on this um, this experience. We, we have a number of packages available um, for one night and two nights. So twin share one night can start from $380 and uh, twin share for two nights starting from $760. Uh, we have recently opened up to younger children um, and we've found that a lot of families really enjoy uh, this opportunity to come and experience life on the land at Catherine Outback Experience. So there's a, another beautiful image of, of uh, under the stars in the Outback. It is important I do mention this, um, our national tour. So as I said before, we generally operate from April to October. With the glamping part, we actually limit the season a little bit further at the moment just because of the, the warmer months and the risk of, um, I guess, guests not being as comfortable. 
Um, so we generally are opening from mid-May to mid-September at the moment for the glamping. And then uh, while we're not open in Catherine, we actually hit the road touring with the Outback Show and the music. So I mentioned my husband, Tom, is a singer-songwriter. He has been fortunate to win some national awards, including the Golden Guitars, which is Australia's highest accolade in country music. Uh, and we thought, you know, we can't just sit around, so let's hit the road and uh, bring our amazing experience to people all around the country. So we're actually about to set off um, in the coming weeks through WA, South Australia, and if all goes to plan, even uh, Western Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland. It just depends on that little COVID situation. Uh, so at our venue, we do offer other um, opportunities for groups um, or, or private functions. So we, as you can see, there's um, the opportunity for long table dinners, lunches, corporate events, uh, and even team building type experiences. We do a lot with business events, um, as well as just private cocktail functions. Our target market includes the free independent travellers, tour groups, incentive travel groups, uh, business events and school groups. Uh, and we are obviously seeing um, a lot more families on the road nowadays, which is pretty exciting. So recent achievements, uh, I guess in recent years, include winning um, the best tourist attraction in the NT for the last two years in which it has operated, um, which wasn't last year, um, as well as um, maintaining a very high rating on TripAdvisor. Uh, and as I mentioned before, a number of um, music accolades to Tom's name as well. So a little bit of what um, people say about us. They say it's very Australian, family friendly, entertaining, informative. Um, I guess something that people always say when they come to our experience is it's, it's so different to what they expected in that it is so much, they learn so much more than they expected. Um, they come thinking it's just going to be entertainment, but in fact, it's um, there's so much information about how we train the animals. And um, I guess there's a lot of dog owners out there uh, so they particularly love the tips that we give on how we train our dogs and what they might be able to take home uh, to work with their own own dogs. Uh, so here's our contact information. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, please do not hesitate to get in contact with us. We are contracted with all mainstream domestic wholesalers. If you can't find us in your system, uh, please email us and we'll follow up up with your product manager. We um, we do work really close with Top End Marketing Co, Sally Gregory, who some of you may know, uh, and she does a lot of this work on our behalf, particularly while I'm busy being a mum. Uh, but please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we're always ears open to any ideas you might have or requests, uh, and we are sending out our rate sheets in the coming days. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Annabelle. That was really interesting. It looks it's a great product that you have there. Um, I know there was a few questions came through, Gabs. Have you got anything that you need us to answer? Um, just the questions in regards to um, we had one question there if the tents are on suited. So I believe the facilities are close by. Is that right, Annabelle? Yeah, great question. I actually had a photo in there to prompt me to talk to that one. Um, they're not on suited, but we have beautiful um, facilities really, really close to the tents. And time and time again, um, when people get to see them, they go, oh my goodness, I can't believe how clean and beautiful they are. And they've got this gorgeous outback sort of theme to them. So they're not on suited, but they're still pretty flash. Awesome. And then we just had a question from Monique about um, the months that the glamping tents will run from. So can you just reconfirm that for us? Yep. So the glamping at the moment is operating from mid-May to mid-September. Wonderful. And then Robert's just asked about the starting times of the shows. Uh, yep. So we are moving to a more consistent time frame um, so 9 30 a.m to 12 p.m uh, but we do still open shows um, a bit more flexible with uh, tour group schedules so there's a few um, other times that will be available um, and it just depends like the GAN train and a few things like that that we work with and they're also open to the general public Wonderful. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Annabelle. <clears throat> um, sorry, there was just one last question coming through there. Is the glamping South catered? That was from Shelley. Uh, there's different packages available. So okay. we, we, um, we do offer 
um, packages that include meals. We are quite close to town, so there's we're only six k's from the centre of town, six kilometres, um, and there's some amazing local restaurants and cafes. Uh, but there's also facilities, um, kitchen facilities for people to, um, if they wish, to to do their own food. Great. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, I guess if there's any other questions, people can get in touch with us um, or have a look at uh, Annabelle's website. Her details were just on the screen earlier. So thank you, Annabelle. That was that was really interesting. I just want to hand now over to Angelina Briscoe from Wendy Woo Tours. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Angelina from Wendy Woo. Some of you may already know me. I'm based in Queensland and I am the National Account Manager for Wendy Woo Tours. So I'm happy today to introduce you our new uh, tours, particularly those for Northern Territory. So let's get started and I'll start the presentation for you. OK, can everyone see the screen there? Yes. Oh, good. Fantastic. All right. So at Wendy Woo Tours, you know us well for touring through Asia and beyond. And whilst the borders have been closed, um, we saw the need to bring um, Wendy Woo Tours closer to home. And this was really important to us to offer those touring options uh, for your customers who love traveling with us internationally. And now we've given them the opportunity to travel closer to home. So Discover Australia like never before. We've just released our new Australia uh, New Zealand brochure for 2022 and 23, and they feature all of our Australia itineraries. And this is where you'll find our tours. And these have been thoughtfully designed and offer truly immersive and authentic experiences. They include most meals, hand-picked accommodation, transportation, and comprehensive sightseeing led by expert guides. Now these are small groups of only 15 to 20 guests. And and they are sold as land only packages. So that gives you um, the option to add on uh, the domestic flights for your clients. Now our first tour uh, is one of our popular tours. Actually, it is the most popular tour in our Australia range. Uh, we do have, as I said, two tours to Northern Territory. Now Treasures of the Red Centre um, is two nights in Uluru, two nights in Kings Canyon, and also two nights in Alice Springs. Now this seven day tour has May and June departures for next year, so great weather during that time, offering many unique highlights, of course, including the magnificent natural red sandstone monolith that is the heart of the red center and also a sacred site to indigenous Australians. Now this formed over 550 million years ago um, and is a must see on this tour of course as well as the stunning sites as Kings Canyon, Catherine Gorge and historical sites in Alice Springs. Now we've included four to five star accommodation on this tour, two nights staying at the beautiful sails in the desert, also two nights in Kings Canyon and uh, we stay at the Hilton Double tree Alice Springs and there is many unique and immersive experiences on this tour. Now you get to see Uluru more than just once on this tour, um, more than uh, at least two sunsets and two sunrises. Um, so you will get your fill of um, Ayers Rock. So guests will be met at uh, the Ayers Rock Airport upon arrival and transferred to the Sales and the Desert Resort on the first day. Um, we do have our comfortable coach um, driving as well throughout. And then on the first day we do travel out 40 kilometres west of Uluru to Katajuka where it's equally impressive and as culturally significant famous neighbour. Um, and here we walk uh, the Walpa Gorge and we follow that with champagne and nibbles from the viewing platform at Katajuka as well. Now also at Uluru the group takes a guided base tour through um, Mutajulu waterhole and they also will learn about the uh, rock paintings that depict Indigenous stories and history. Now seeing Uluru by night is simply stunning, of course. So included in our authentic experiences 
is uh, where you get to see the sun sink behind Uluru, then watch the desert lights for a once in a lifetime um, event, which is the field installation of lights uh, by artist Bruce Monroe. And this is uh, on for a limited time. So it's a great time to get your clients out there to experience it. And then afterwards, we take a seat at the Sounds of Silence dining experience. So here guests will enjoy a three course meal infused with bush tucker flavors, also whilst listening to the resident star talker that will help decipher, decipher the blanket of constellations that illuminate the evening. Now next we um, go to Kings Canyon and this tour um, takes in the best of Kings Canyon. This landscape 40, 440 million years in the making is like no other place on earth. Now the drive and the it walk to the top is well worth the effort and for those less adventurous uh, we do the lower rim walk as well. So this also includes the Garden of Eden. And so afterwards, later on, the guests can relax in the resort, um, have some lunch at leisure and also cool off in the pool. Now we end this tour in Alice Springs. We visit the School of the Air, the Telegraph Station and also the Royal Flying Doctors Headquarters. And after dinner, we head for a tasty pint at the Alice Springs Brewing Co. And then the group will head out for a nocturnal tour on the Mulga Walk, which is located in the foothills of the McDonnell Ranges. So our next tour is Gems of Kakadua. Now we've made this tour so the dates actually work back to back with our treasures of the Red Centre tour. So you can sell this as a seven plus five day touring option. So the Kakadua tour takes in the very best of the top end when you combine both tours. Or for those that have seen um, Uluru, then Kakadu um, five day adventure is well worth it. Taking in the highlights starting from Darwin where we stay at um, the Hilton Hotel Darwin and Esplanade there. We discover the history and the beauty of Darwin at the Botanical Gardens, the Aviation Museum with the more for the history buffs. And then we also enjoy a dinner at Darwin's famous Asian infusion restaurant, Hanuman's Restaurant. And we also go uh, and see the crocodile uh, jumping cruise on the Adelaide River, as well as visiting Pine Creek, the Adelaide War, uh, River War Cemetery in Darwin, Edith Falls, and of course we visit um, the Warrigan Cultural Centre as well on this tour. So again, great hotel and accommodation on this tour. Now, of course, the must-see is Kakadu on this tour, so it is the highlight. This is the largest national park in Australia, covering 20,000 square kilometres. And uh, we explore here the ancient Aboriginal rock art galleries, believed to be more than 20,000 years old. And Kakadu National Park is recognised for its both its cultural and natural value, and hence it is World Heritage listed. So our tours and our guests will have the opportunity to experience and try their hand at many ancient Indigenous crafts and learn about local traditions. And there are endless opportunities to meet the locals all in the comfort of our small group tours. Now, of course, on this tour, we have two cruises. So we take in our yellow water billabong as well. So this is a truly unforgettable experience. And this uh, is where you'll cruise um, along the water. You'll see the dramatic scenery of Kakadu's most famous wetland. And it's also home to saltwater crocodiles and, of course, dozens of beautiful, colourful bird life. Here, guests will see the expansive wetlands wet and enjoy the scenic boardwalk views as well. Our second cruise is Catherine Gorge. So uh, this uh, cruise cruises right through the stunning network of 13 gorges carved from billion year old sandstone. And here guests will be right amongst it uh, with more sights of uh, freshwater crocodiles, wonderful bird life and stunning scenery. So this is where it is nature lovers, photographers and cultures dreams traveling through here. So cameras at the ready um, for you know exciting adventures through the Northern Territory. Now with Wendy Wu Tours as well, 
Uh, we have our book with confidence guarantee. So providing our guests and yourselves peace of mind when booking and selling our tours. Deposits for our Australian tours are only $99 per person with nothing further to pay until 75 days prior to departure. We also offer unlimited changes up until final payment, which is a 75 days prior. So you'll find out more about our book with confidence guarantee on our website. And for trade support, of course, um, we have our support tools and they are available via our agent portal. You can download our brochure. Now this is an e-brochure and it is a digital interactive brochure. So you can download that, share that with your clients. Um, and also we do have social media packs to support our um, Australian tours and also a flyer. So whilst we don't have a brochure printed, we do have a PDF flyer available that you can print and uh, display in your stores or send to your clients via email. Plus, of course, you can book online anytime or call our res team Monday to Friday. We also have our agent Facebook group. So please join us for our daily updates on that. Um, Australia agents and um, we can also arrange tailor-made options as well so whilst we're not touring now um, we can arrange tailor-made options um, and also special group departures for private tours of um, 10 or more guests as well we can organize that for you so if you have any queries just email me at sales support at Wendy Wu Tours and um, we would love to see you traveling with us in Australia for 2022. And um, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Angelina. That was really interesting. We have had a question come through, I believe. Gabs? Um, yes, thanks for that, Angelina. They look some, like some great itineraries. Um, we've you. just had, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, we just had Sharon ask what the size of the Wendy Wu tours are going to be. Maximum of 20 passengers on these tours. So guaranteed departures with a minimum of 15 and maximum of 20. Oh, perfect. And also we've had another question come through from Shelley. Is when do we tour, offering tours in the NT in 2023? Um, likely, yes. We consider this will stay as a permanent fixture in our range. Um, so at this stage, um, we have only 2022 prices in the brochure, although we do have New Zealand for 23. So I'll say it's highly likely. Um, well, there's a few more coming through. Um, are you still able to book domestic flights? Uh, we can on request for sure. We can um, certainly help you with that. Um, and we do recommend for all flights, obviously, during these times to book flexible um, uh, flights with, you know, you know, flexible fare rules because um, just, you know, depending on the current COVID times, it's always best um, to book a flexible fare, as we all know. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> we've got one from Karen there. Um, Will all travellers have to be fully vaccinated? Well, good question. And it's the question of the week, actually. So we, of course, will um, have not released a statement or policy as such. Um, with our tours, we rely on airline rules. So particularly if your clients are flying with Qantas or Virgin, so forth, then they will abide by the rules of the airfare, or airlines, I should say, and also the state and border rules. So um, at this stage for domestic tours, that's uh, where we're at at the moment. However, going forward, we are working on a, um, a structured policy um, for our domestic and our international tours. So, and again, that is very fluid as well, going with the situation and going with, you know, that changing daily, um, you know, sort of COVID, um, pan, you know, rules as we go along. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, we've had another one come through from John. Um, he's just asked, will you refund after 75 days if borders close? Okay, so this is a question <laughs> again. Um, so basically we will, um, after 75 days, we're just finalising um, that depending on final payment, um, 
So we will basically refund um, all recoverable monies um, and then there obviously will be the $99 deposit will stay in credit. It is subject to the suppliers and subject to um, certain conditions. So not every tour um, will be similar, but um, we will um, basically for NT, um, I'll have to confirm because we do have the, um, after 74 days, there is fees that may apply basically. So third party fees that may apply. Great. That was our longest answer ever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angelina. That was really good. If, I think if there's any more questions, people um, have, if they have more questions for you, they can contact you at sales support at Wendy Woo. Yes, correct. Dot Email me at sales support um, at wendywoochillers.com.au. That'd be great. Great. Thank you so much, Angelina. That was really interesting. Thank um, you. <laughs> right, next we have got Tim Nielsen from Top End Day Tours. I will wait for you, Tim, to... Yep, here you go, and you are on mute. You are that, on mute. Yep, got you. Is that better? Can you see my presentation? I can, yep. Yep, we can see it. Okay. Wait a sec, it's not coming up in the... There you go. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, Thank you for having me on board, Gabby and Kieran. I really appreciate the invite. And um, I suppose following from um, Annabelle and Angelina's um, um, products, there's um, great reasons to get to the territory. So I'm hoping to inspire everybody a little bit more with some Indigenous content now. So, um, so Tim Nielsen here from Top End Day Tours. We're um, we're a small family-run um, business. We work very closely with the community. In Western Arnhem Land, um, Owen Pelly or Gunbalunya is um, is the indigenous name. We um, we um, you know it's more than just a day tour with us. It's um, it's a close connection with the uh, with the community. So um, our tours um, operate between May and October um, each year. The earlier times of the year, for example, um, in May. Sometimes we're subject to uh, to flooding. It's um, we have to cross Carhills Crossing, and that's a, a tidal um, a tidal river. And um, depending on how much rain or the, how big the wet season was, uh, we can have some issues early on in the season. But um, um, you know we manage that pretty well. So um, we're fully bookable on Resdi, and there's a free cancellation um, with um, 48 hours notice for our tours. Um, now the Marabou bus, that's the nickname that the local community have given our bus. And the ma a marabou is that um, that round circle on the side of the bus, those marabou mats that are woven out of all natural dyes um, by the ladies uh, at the art centre there. So um, we have a real um, community connection. We have uh, we operate just two vehicles. We have a 10-seater Toyota high, um, high ace van. Um, look, it does, it does, it's capable of seating 12, but, We'd like to keep it at 10. It's just a little bit more comfortable that way, a little bit less jammed in. Um, and there's a 16-seat um, a 4x4 Isuzu, which is the Barabu bus. They're, both our vehicles are comfortable, air-conditioned vehicles, um, well-maintained, all that sort of stuff. So it's a real our, – our trip, our day tour is a, a real cultural exchange. It's a real connection. There's a one-on-one -on -one um, opportunities with our guides and it really is talking with our customers. I went out on pretty much every tour this year. Um, I thought it was a great opportunity for me as the um, owner to not sit um, to not sit on my bum in the office but to get out and have a look and experience um, and um, the feedback that I was getting from our customers was really it's, um, it really is a place to connect. It's certainly an adventure for people coming out of the city um, um, you know, most most of our clients are coming from New South Wales or Victoria, um, and um, it's a great place to escape. You can see that picture on the left there with um, with Michael, the Indigenous guide, and um, one of our other guides, Tim. You can see the wide open spaces there. Um, and it's also a great place to learn. Um, we sit on some. Um, there's some areas there where those um, people are sitting. And uh, those rocks that the people are sitting on are polished smooth, and those rocks are polished smooth by bums. 
those people have been sitting on those indigenous people have been sitting on those rocks for centuries and um and those rocks um have just been polished and um we sit there and um you know we 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 um our guests can ask questions. Our guests can um, they ask all sorts of questions, like uh, how do they how how do the indigenous guys up there how do they bury their dead? Uh, how do they get married? Um, what happens if someone does something wrong? How do they get punished? All that sort of stuff. And and what's life today like in Western Arnhem Land for 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 these guys? Um, this is Tomo on the right, and uh, one of our other characters for this season, Sebastian, uh, with Ethan, our, um, our, our guide. So Gamak is the local um, Benin Kanwak um, language. Um, welcome, good day, hello, good morning, how are you going? Um, and um, so, um, so just introducing some of our guides, we, we contribute to the employment of up to 25 Indigenous guides. English is never their first language. In fact, one of our guys, he's um, talked to me about English as his sixth language. But generally, it's um, for both Tomo and Sebastian there, it's their third or fourth language. Um, so therefore, we like to um, place our tours, um, in, it's in a real authentic Indigenous guided tour. These guys, I've got a great story from this season where um, Sebastian and one of our other guides was sitting under a rock ledge, and there was this um, uh, an image in the rock art of um, a rock python. And one of the clients asked, um, "Do you eat them?" And the two boys sort of started communicating in language, and um, and Gleason said, "Yeah, yeah, we eat them." And the customer asked, um, "What does it taste like?" The rock python, that is. And um, Gleason said, "Well, the two boys started communicating again." And they said, uh, tastes like file snake. And the customer said, well, yeah, but what does file snake taste like? And the boy said, well, it tastes like goanna. And of course, at that point, the client said, okay, fair enough. So what I wanted to say, uh, convey by that sto um, little story was um, these guys live a largely traditional life out in Arnhem Land. And they, um, their first port of call wasn't to say chicken or anything like that. It was to compare it to the other kinds of foods they would eat. Um, one of the questions we often get asked is, um, do the community want us on their land? The, the traditional owners, do they, um, do they um, you know, are we welcome there? And what I say to my clients is, hell yeah, they absolutely love um, having um, tours out there. Uh, we, we employ one guide a day uh, on each tour, but quite often we've got up to four guides. In fact, Sebastian... He um, about four weeks ago came out with his two daughters, and um, and they took the tour. So um, you know they they're really passionate about having people out there. Um, where we go is some of the most significant rock art sites in Australia and in fact the world. One thing that a lot of people don't realise is um, Australia is a real hotspot globally for rock art. Um, the locations that we go to. There's rock art that ranges from approximately 6,000 years old right up to as recently as around 100 years of age. Um, in fact, um, one of the men that, um, one of the images that I've got on this slide presentation, which I'll point out when we get to it, um, he painted that, he only died about 18, 20 years ago. So what we love is that these people are still practicing this, um, the tradition of telling their stories on, um, on rock art walls. Um, we also visit Inulak Arts Centre, which is um, during COVID times, you know, we've heard this a few times um, a lot lately, um, Inulak Arts Centre had to move to another location. Um, and I'll talk about that in a, in a little while. So with our tours, it's interactive interpretation. Um, our tours aren't scripted at all. Um, we do not um, have a time scale, you know, where, all right, everybody, we've seen this, let's move on to the next one. Um, we, um, we go at the pace of our, of our clients. So um, the longer you spend at each of these rock art sites, the more you will see. So some of these rock art sites I've been to possibly 70 times this year, and, um, and I'm still seeing things that I hadn't seen before. So... Um, we take our tours at a slow pace. We haven't 
released our rates for this year yet, just because we were waiting on some confirmation for some uh, from a, um, another partner of ours. Um, but we're looking this year at operating our tours just on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. But we certainly can do other days by negotiation, uh, subject to numbers, of course. Um, our tours depart X. We're the only day tour company that departs X Darwin and Jabiru, and Jabiru that goes into Arnhem Land. So our tours depart at about 5.15 a.m. in the morning. Um, they're around 15 hour days. It does vary a little bit. Um, and if you look at that map that's on the right hand side of the screen, we pick up in Darwin, which um, is further off to the left there. We take the Arnhem Highway, pick up again at 8.30 a.m. in Jabiru. And then we head on um, up to the top right hand corner of that map to Arnhem Pally which is um, the lighter green section on that map, which is, is Arnhem Land. It's at that point you're out of national parks, you're actually in Aboriginal lands, uh, and you need a permit to get in there. It's about a $1,000 fine if you're caught in there without a permit. So um, this isn't a place where people can just rock up out and, and FITs can travel through there easily. Um, so it's one of those places, it's, it's one of the last places in Australia where um, it's, you know, uh, the the in, local Indigenous culture is certainly the um, the dominant, if you like, um, influence in the area. Um, and it's intimate group sizes. We we have got a permit for up. We can take up to 29 people a day and two vehicles into Arnhem Land. But um, we try and keep it down to the um, to the one vehicle, which is 16 to 17 capacity. Um, on our tours, you get to, to see some amazing rock art. We've got um, Yingana, the creation mother, um, on the right there. Um, Ying, she's the oldest rock art story in Australia. She relates back to the um, um, to the rainbow serpent, if you like. So she's, um, she's as old as Aboriginal culture is. She came from um, – it is said that she came from, um, from the sea and those dilly bags that are hanging from her head – carry the um, ancestors of every Indigenous person in Australia. And um, she's quite a powerful image. And, um, you know, people get to up close, you know, there's no no barriers in, in Arnhem Land. So you can get to right up close to these images and get quite personal. And um, we our tours, one thing that also that I love about our tours is um, Gabriella on the left. We have a mix of male and female guides on our tours. And that's... Um, it's really quite interesting for our, you know, from our perspective that we get a, a, a different story from the men as we do from the women, which is quite, quite intriguing. Um, we also do a Meekin Valley Red Lily tour. Um, once again, all of our tours are fully Indigenous um, guided. And for anybody that has seen the movie High Ground that was in the cinemas earlier this year, it was filmed in the Meekin Valley. And, um, you know, we really, this COVID has been a pain in the bum for all of us, but it's certainly been a um, a bit of a blessing for us because we got to um, to work with a whole different Indigenous community that we hadn't worked with before, the Nyingal family. Um, absolutely amazing ambassadors for their for their culture. Absolutely fired up to be working more and more with tourism, and we hope to work with them more into the um, into the future. But um, they've allowed us onto their land, and um, we. Um, you know, we, we, we really um, we're indebted to that. But there's just an image there of our lunch. Uh, a lot of people um, comment on our on the lunch spread that we have. It's quite basic, but it covers all vegetarian, um, um, gluten-free, all that sort of stuff as well. That image on the right there, that's Jacob's hand. That's that image that was painted by the um, by um, J Jacob Nyingle. He's, um, he's the man who died about 20 years ago. So... Where we go, as I said earlier, the artwork ranges from 6,000 years old to, to relatively recent. Um, you'll see there on the left, there's a blue ship. Uh, that blue ship was actually painted with um, Ricketts blue washing powder. So they, um, um, you know, that's that's very new. That was an influence from European settlement. Um, <clears throat> so there's inspiring culture, history and story, storytelling uh, throughout the day on our tours. Uh, COVID-19 challenges. We work very closely with Indigenous community and Indigenous guides. And um, 
so therefore COVID is a is a real is a real issue for for how we can move forward. So um, what we do, you'll see here that we've got an option there with face mask down the bottom right hand cor corner. Uh, and that's Connie Nyingle, the one up front with the solo can. She's a senior traditional owner for the area. It's very, very impressed to have a senior traditional owner come out and take the tours. Um, but then you'll see the other two images where we're, you know, socially distanced. We keep a little bit of distance from from the guides. So um, we, we, as far as vaccinations and stuff like that goes, we're still waiting to hear from the Northern Land Council. But I'm going to assume next year if we're going to have access to Arnhem Land, that we're going to need people that are vaccinated booking our tours. Um, how that looks and how we administer that, um, I'm, I'm yet to, to put that together. We've got a little while to figure that out, but um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that all of our customers, the Northern Land Council is going to request that everybody is, is vaccinated. Um, we don't, with the face masks, we don't walk, we don't hike um, because, um, with those masks on, sorry, because it, it is just too warm. It's usually when we're just when we're parked up, when we're sitting standing around and listening to those um, to the indigenous guides tell some stories. Um, the, with COVID challenges, there needs to be some flexibility with our touring options. Um, our big product was the Inulak Hill Tour, um, and for those of you that we are we've been contracted to for some years, um, you know, our company started off formally as Lords Arnhem Land Safaris. Um, Sab Lord and Anne Marie started it up. They, um, that's our big product. However, with COVID and with the Indigenous community, some sometimes we're just not able to to access Inulak Hill, where that's where we go to Meekin Valley. Uh, and um, in my opinion, the Meekin Valley is a, a far better product. I think it's uh, the artwork is is um is is has got a lot more variety to it than than Inulak Hill. Um, access and suitability. This was something that me, me attending the tours this year became very, um, um, it became very evident that we were booking a lot of people that weren't really suitable for our tours. And what I mean by suitable is you don't have to be fit. For anybody that knows me, I'm not the fittest bloke in the, in, on the planet, but I managed to do this tour pretty much every second day for the whole season this year. Um, but unlike Kakadu and, and most of your other national parks, um, they're all fantastic. But Arnhem Land, there is no infrastructure. Um, what you're looking at on that image on the right, that is what we're walking over. There's no footpaths, there's no handrails, and there's no signs. So um, what you need to be is mobile rather than fit. We don't have a lot of hiking, especially on the Meekin Valley Tour but we do have areas where you're climbing over rocks and it's more about being um, agile. We had a lady this year who not that long ago had two knee re um, replacements and um, we got her up there, absolutely. But the whole tour took about two hours longer than it should have. Uh, we were lucky because we had three Indigenous guides that day and uh, the other customers that got down to the bottom of the hill just had an extra two hours with the guides and just, they just told stories, it was fantastic. Um, you are hit walking through the heat of the day, so we do request people bring water bottles. We've got plenty of iced water on board for refills, but it's amazing the number of people that come on board with a, um, you know, a, a half litre water container and we're away from the vehicle for the best part of um, two or three hours and, um, you know, the temperature's 35, 36 degrees. Um, <clears throat> So it's just one of those things that customers, you know, clients need to be aware so that they're prepared. Our rates for the 2022 season, uh, yes, we pay commission. Uh, we're fully bookable on ResDi. Um, X Darwin is 314. That's just a 5% price rise on what it's been for the last several years. Um, and X Jabiru is 293. Um, pick up times and drop off times. X Darwin, we pick up at around 5.15 a.m and we return at around 7.30, 8pm, and X Jabiru is, um, we pick up at 8.30 and we're dropping off at around 4pm. Um, around so the next one is 
the questions. Um, that's that's our, our our contact information. We're on Facebook. We've got lots of updated photos from our um, from our 2021 season. That mobile number down there is my number. Uh, you'll get me. Um, we're a fairly small company, so when you ring that, uh, leave messages. Sometimes I'm in Arnhem Land and we don't often have good reception. Uh, we're on Facebook. That's our website. And um, they're my, I know you shouldn't have favourites, but they're my two favourite guides. That's Seb on the left and Gleason on the right. And um, I'm down in Adelaide um, momentarily and I'm looking forward to getting back up north and hanging out with my boys. So if anyone's got any questions, I'd be keen to catch up with you. Thanks, Tim. I think we have had one come through. Mm -hmm. Gabrielle, was that? Do you have that yeah, there? um, Amy's just asked if you offer any private tours. Ah, uh, yes, we do. Um, it's yeah, obviously we we can cater or tailor things um to people and um and yet, but yes, we do do private tours. We still only have those big vehicles. Um, you know, we don't have smaller land cruisers or anything like that. But and we do we have taken whole school groups out or hiking groups. Um, we we are working. We are working with the new the Nyingles to look at some other packages where they're even looking at accommodation, so um, overnight or multi-day accommodation in in quite a remote um, area. One of them, it's absolutely stunning the location, which would be a mix of the culture, rock art, um, and um, you know we I went there earlier in the year and you could literally hear the fish in the water. There were so many. So um, yes, we do have different options. Um, Get in touch with us, and we, you know, we're keen to chat with you about it. Great. And um, Denise has just asked what your minimum numbers are. Hello, Denise. How are you? Um, yeah, Denise. On our Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, uh, we generally we don't have minimum numbers. Um, we have brought that in this year with COVID, just because we were going with, you know, three people or whatever, and it just wasn't worthwhile at the moment. But in a normal year. Um, no, we don't have minimum numbers. Um, I, um, um, if we did start looking to book, if things got booked out on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we bought on some more dates like the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we would, um, you know, we would certainly maybe be looking at um, at those days. But had it have a chat with us, and um, you know, we we can we can work with that with you. You know, work on it with you. Great. Thank you. Uh, was there anything else come through, Gab? I think everyone's just very excited to go on the tour. I oh, know. They right. look great, actually. And, <laughs> and, it's, a really, and it's a great option if you're, uh, you know, if you've got a client coming up for a shorter amount of time and they want to do something com completely authentic and unique, I think it looks amazing. Um, yeah, Gabby and Karen, I just wanted to say one other thing. Um, anybody who wants to come out and do a for mill, I think it's really important if you're, if you're, you know, to know our product, if you're going to, to be representing us in the marketplace, I'm more than keen to have people out, come up with a familiar, come and have a, meet the guides, um, meet the company. And, um, you know, we'd, we'd love to take out and experience something that really is it's pretty special. And some of our reviews on TripAdvisor this year have been, you know, life changing, you know, um, an honour. Those sort of words are what's being used. And I had a young lad this year, he was only, he was about eight, and his mum come up and said, um, do you know what, um, I think his name is Adrian. Do you know what Adrian just said? I said, no, what did you say? And she said, Aboriginal culture is so cool. You know, these um, these guys are just so passionate and they're so forthcoming with their with their knowledge that um, you just get really immersed in it, you know? Of course, absolutely. I know it's a beautiful culture. Um, well, well, we might just wrap things up there. Thank you so much, Tim. That was really interesting. I've really enjoyed learning about your products. And thank you to Angelina and Annabelle who have also been on today. If anyone's got any more questions for Tim, they can look at his website. Um, it is on the screen there. And I think Gabrielle has just sent through his um, his um, contact. I'll just quickly show my last screen just so that you can see you've got my contact details there um, thank you to everybody who has attended today if you've got any questions about the NT please get in touch with me um, and for any of the Australian based agents on the line today please join our summer sale webinar next week to learn how you can make the most out of the incentive campaign um, but we'll see you all again in a few months so thanks very much guys <laughs>